Well, hello and welcome everyone to yet another one of my Gotham Season 4 videos. In this video, I'll be discussing the origin story of the latest addition to the roster of villains in Gotham, that being Solomon Grundy, aka Cyrus Gold, aka Butch Gilzine. Now, I'm guessing some of us were extremely angry or irritated to say the least when Barbara took Butch down, especially when she died not too long after at the hands of Tabitha. That kind of felt like a total waste of two perfectly good characters. I'm kind of a bit north of 90% sure that Barbara will be back. We are yet to get a confirmation on that one though. However, besides the Batman Begins Batman Year One Easter egg scene, the best scene to follow both his and her death on the finale was the reveal of Butch Gilzine as Cyrus Gold on the very final moments. That just eased our pain. I'm not sure how many of you share my opinion here, but I've always loved the character on the show. Butch, after all, has so far been one of the most versatile characters on the show, from being Fish Mooney's henchman to being reprogrammed by Penguin in a manner of speaking and serving him loyally for a while. Then there was the Rise of Butch arc, betraying Penguin out of jealousy as Nigma became the guy Cobblepot trusts the most. And now we've got the new zombified Butch coming into play over the course of the fourth season of the show. The question now is, who is Solomon Grundy on the pages of the comics? Now before we get into the answer to this question, I'd like to remind you that it would be much appreciated if you drop me a like if you end up liking the content of this video and if you subscribe if you want to see more of my Gotham videos. I would also like to remind you to click that bell-shaped icon underneath this video if you haven't already, that way you would get informed of any new videos of mine as they come online. But circling back to Solomon Grundy, now Cyrus Gold made his debut on the pages of the 61st issue of All American Comics on the 1st of October 1944, and since then, and over his appearance within the fold of hundreds of issues, he's been the antagonist to too many DC superheroes, including the Green Lantern, Superman, the Justice League, Starman, Batman, the Green Arrow, Wonder Woman, among others. The origin of Gold is presented in the miserable childhood he had as his father moved to Gotham in search for fame and fortune and failed ending up working at the city's docks. As his father's life deteriorated and as he kept being bullied within the failing city that is Gotham, the senior Gold became very hateful and pretty much took it out on his family. He kind of used them as a punching bag, pulling things ranging from beating his wife up to abusing Cyrus and burying him alive in a grave every year on his birthday. To add insult to injury and in a very selfish act and as part of a very selfish decision, his mother, who couldn't take it anymore, packed her bags one day, kissed him goodbye and abandoned him for good. Now later on down the road and after his father died post a crate falling on his head on the docks where he worked, Cyrus was left with nothing and just like his father, he made the decision to work on growing in terms of both fame and fortune. Now what the father failed at, the son actually succeeded at, even though he did it all through illegal and criminal means, but it did work nonetheless. So Cyrus ended up becoming wealthy, powerful and well known, went for vengeance against every person who made his life and the life of his family miserable back when he was a child, made sure he killed them all. Pretty much he became one of the bigger mobsters in Gotham, sort of like Butch at one point around the time Penguin was in Indian Hill and Theo Gallivan was pretty much running the scene in Gotham. Now Cyrus ended up married to Pearl, his old best friend and flame, had two children with her and initially had the perfect happy life. Then he came to prove the apple that he is definitely didn't fall far away from the tree. He was his father's son, stayed out late, drank a lot, became verbally abusive of his wife and at some point couldn't control his anger, drowning her in the process. Now later on down the road, Cyrus ended up being chased by mobsters seeking vengeance upon him and planning on killing him. Realizing he would die at their hands at this point, his ego got the better of him and he decided to stab himself in the heart rather than die at anyone else's hands. That all happened in the slaughter swamp where he supposedly laid himself to rest and where he buried dozens of his victims over the years. With the chemicals within the swamp coming together with his body and relatively preserving it over the years, the man who lost his life at the very end of the 19th century came back to life 50 years later. More swamp muck and decayed than man, but nonetheless, Cyrus was reanimated and has come back to life. The new and zombified version of Cyrus couldn't remember who he was and what he was like prior to the unfortunate incident that took his life, treated the swamp like it was his home and his parent and killed any trespassers. At some point when he managed to utter a few words for the first time and was asked who he was, he still remembered nothing of his days as a human being except for the fact that he was born on a Monday. That reminded the inquirers of a rhyme about a Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy, born on a Monday, christened on Tuesday, Day, married on Wednesday, took ill on Thursday, grew worse on Friday, died on Saturday, 
buried on Sunday, that was the end of Solomon Grundy. Now that was exactly where the new and animated version of Cyrus Gold adopted the name Solomon Grundy, becoming the villain and murderer that he was in the comics and over so many issues. Worth noting here though that every single time Grundy died he came back to life once again, only with a different personality than the ones before. We could see him on the pages of the comics, sometimes befriending heroes and being a better version of himself but usually reborn to kill heroes and fight them while befriending villains. Now a different origin story for Grundy happens to come into play post Flashpoint where he's a simple man living with his wife and son in the slaughter swamps in the 1890s. His wife had to prostitute herself to put food on the table which led to her breaking down at some point ending up killing herself. Solomon killed everyone who has ever used and abused his family including his now dead wife then stabbed himself making the swamp his final resting place in the human state that is. And you know the drill from here, he came back, zombified, became a villain, the whole nine yards. But finally and before I end this video, let's talk powers. Grundy is considerably one of the strongest DC villains. The zombie version of Cyrus Gold possesses superhuman strength, a heightened sense for danger, the ability to absorb energy and manipulate it, and the ability to heal. But besides all that, he is also invulnerable to diseases and human ailments considering his zombified and animated state. He does not feel hunger, thirst or the need to sleep and every single time he dies and gets reanimated once more, he acquires more strength than he had before and is sometimes highly intelligent. Now given all that we know about Gotham's Butch, I'm guessing the Solomon Grundy version we'll be seeing on the show will be closer to the first origin story I mentioned here, you know being a mobster, ending up dead and coming back reanimated. It kind of fits the profile, even though Butch as a character seems so far way nicer than your typical Cyrus Gold persona, more or less similar to his post Flashpoint origin personality. Now with that being said, let me know in the comments if this quick video on the character helps and if you want to see more of these videos on season 4 of Gotham. Let me know as well if you're excited about what the show is doing to Butch's character, turning him into Cyrus Gold aka Solomon Grundy. I'm also taking requests, so if there is any specific topic related to Gotham, Supergirl, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, The Flash and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that you want to see in a video, please let me know in the comments as well. But until I see you next time, thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.